Hi guys, I'm Shmi. I'm in France for the Le Mans 24 hour with the Corvette race team. But right now we're going to take a look around the Z06, the road going hardcore focused version, of course, of the new Corvette C7 Stingray. So I'm going to take you on a tour around the exterior, talk about some of the aerodynamic parts and sort of what makes up this car. Then we'll take a quick look at the inside too. So just look at it. It looks awesome. What a machine. The Z06 is of course based on the C7 Stingray, but focused, a lot of aerodynamic wizardry going on and optimized for track performance. It's based around the 6.2 litre supercharged V8 engine, 659 horsepower, 881 newton meters of torque. Obviously that gives it some pretty impressive performance figures and very quick times around the track. This particular car has the top level. They do three sort of trim levels. This has the top one, the Z07 package, which gives it all of the aerodynamic sort of options and parts that I'll show you around now. It looks particularly stunning in the yellow with the contrasting sort of black parts throughout the car. Around the front, we've got an extended front splitter and the aerodynamic end plates at the side. That's a third stage option. Well, as you go up through the levels, you add a few more parts. So. We also get the front bonnet um, vents through there, pulling in the hot air, of course. Cold air coming out and rising over the top of the car. Equally around the side, uh, we have some extended arches, as well as the vent at the side to pull air out. The uh, side skirts, again, widened, and we have these two vents back here, which is all to do with the, uh, the airflow for the transmission, um, which is at the back for 50-50 weight distribution with the engine, which is placed quite far rearwards at the front. I'll show you that shortly. We have a large wing around here. There are three stages of wing. This is, of course, the third stage, which at sort of detriment to top speed obviously increases the downforce by having this very aggressive lip to it. So you, you, there's a sort of 15 kilometer per hour difference in top speed, um, dependent upon which wing you have, of course, but with more downforce, you get round corners faster. So the car is set up to drive very briskly. Around back you have the four centre mounted exhausts with valve control and they sound absolutely awesome. <laughs> I'm sure you knew that anyway, <clears throat> but um, that's awesome. And then um, you may or may not have known, but the roof of this car actually comes off and can be stored in the boot, which is quite a neat little touch. Let's head around and jump inside with the key here. Traditional door opening. Now as we have a look inside, quite a nice finish to the car, we've got an Alcantara steering wheel here. Lots of big um, digital displays for the instruments, some supportive seats. Jump in. So I'm going to take a whistle stop tour around the inside, while I'm here actually. So this roof panel, the way you remove it is you have these two, two uh, um, fasteners here and one at the rear, you just literally unpop them all and it lifts straight out and into the boot where there are some mounting points to store it. If I, obviously keyless, turn on the ignition. Actually, let's just start it up. Draws into life. So in front of us, we have the left, obviously, the speedometer. I find it amusing that 0 to 300 is in less than 180 degrees of a circle. We've got that big center display, and you can see E at the bottom for the eco mode. Using this sort of mode selector knob here, you can actually go through a variety of different settings. You've got, uh, if we start fully at the left, you've got weather, presumably for the wet, you've got eco, you've got tour mode, and then if you go further, you've got sport. And what I love about this is it changes the display you're looking at as well. And you can go through a ton of configuration settings and then into track, which changes it again as well. So in the center sort of part, using the jog dial on the steering wheel, you can go through all sorts of different things, tires, fluids, battery, oil. Um, yeah, you get the point. Accelerometer, G-force meter, there's a lot, and a lot of that is replicated on the head-up display, you can see there as well, which you can independently control using this jog here. Um, you can go through different uh, different view styles on that as well, so there's a lot going on here. Random sneaky fact, 
you can put the screen down and there's like a storage cabin, perfect for my video camera, um, with a USB port in there as well. I, I love that, it's so funny. Uh, and then control wise, obviously everything for the uh, entertainment system is done through this. Now if you can see we're in the mall, back to home, you've got all the, the usual stuff you would expect from there. I think it's quite awesome, you have the passenger air conditioning control right over there, so you don't have to lean into the middle and it means this sort of cabin is very driver focused. You can see it's sort of quite pointed back towards where you're sat um, in the driver's seat. Usual sort of conveniences, armrest, cup holders, everything. Now if we take a look back, actually this firstly seat, um, pretty no nice with this carbon fibre piece, um, competition in the seats and then if you look into the back you can see there's quite a lot of luggage space in that hatchback area there. Um, I'll go around and have a look at that from the outside as well. Um, but one or two other things to talk about while we're in here. So you've got the um, paddles even though we've got a seven speed manual gearbox which is an awesome gearbox and a lot of fun to drive, very light clutch, very easy to put into gear. Um, if you pull the paddle it engages the rev matching mode and actually if I just go back into sport I think it tells us that a little more clearly uh, yes if I go into gear you can see it's written in yellow and white rev matches is off and yellow rev matching is on you can turn that on with either paddle so it quite literally rev matches your downshifts um, so when you blip it well you don't have to blip it it blips it when you go down from third to second let's say it perfectly rev matches with an awesome little quick blip and it's just amazing, so you feel like a genius driver. Um, electric handbrake. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty comfortable. We did a decent drive yesterday. Um, I think it's probably only fair to let you hear now a little bit how it sounds. Head round and take a look under the bonnet. So this is interesting to see just because of how low it's all mounted. As you look down, everything is super, super low. There's an aluminium chassis to save weight. The engine is quite far rearwards in the car. You can see it's behind the front wheels. 50-50 weight distribution with that and the um, transmission at the rear. Uh, which is what makes it such a good drive. So I pop open the uh, boot. You can see in here, obviously the size of the storage capacity and the way the roof mounts in with these various mounting points. Well, there's no shortage of putting luggage in there. Um, a little uh, visor as well, I suppose, so you can't see everything that's in. For interest's sake, the centre part of this uh, spoiler is actually clear, so you can see through the rear view mirror. Um, obviously it's slightly detrimental to the uh, view, but at least you can see out of the back and then you just shut the boot down. Close up the bonnet as well. I love cars where it opens in the other direction. Come around and latch that down on this side. There we go. There we go then, that was a look around the Z06. I'm going to be lucky enough to take it out for a test drive now as well, and then drive it around the Le Mans track tomorrow morning before the drivers head out for the actual race. But this car has a lot of tech and extra features. It has a complete camera recording system, so you can see everything, save it to an SD card, cameras at the front, interior, rear. That's all very, very awesome, and you can configure your own overlays and things. Um, there was actually a funny viral video that somebody did where they caught a valet driving their Corvette Stingray um, rather briskly through that camera system, but that's a nice option to have. And obviously the price point on this car, um, it's just over 100,000 euros where it starts. I mean, obviously you can spec it up a bit beyond that to around 140, 145 if you include everything. It's quite significantly cheaper than other cars that the performance it punches against come out at. And it looks the part, I can tell you as we've been driving down from Paris, everybody gets their camera phones out and everybody goes past sort of asking for car swaps and revs and all of those good things. So now I'm going to be taking it out for a test drive. Hope you've enjoyed looking around the Z06. 
I learned some things you didn't necessarily know about it. So I'm very impressed so far. Really looking forward to the rest of this weekend with the Corvette team. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll stay subscribed, check out the other videos. I'll catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. Mm-hmm.